The passenger ferry Estonia sank on September 28, 1994, in very heavy weather. This dramatic event sparked serious discussion and speculation about preserving the sunken ship as a sanctuary and also minimizing the possibility of environmental accident. The Swedish government decided in the spring of 1995 to cover the wreck and preserve it as a grave. This decision influenced that of the Finnish Environmental Institute on May 5, 1995, that environmentally hazardous fuel oils and lubricating oils be removed from the wreck before the covering operations began. The wreck lies in the maritime jurisdiction area of the Finnish Environmental Institute. Well, that was the main reason, and of course there was some other details uh, um, included. Uh, nearby was the uh, national park, uh, so-called uh, archipelago park. That uh, that's nature is very very rare and uh, vulnerable for oil pollution, and uh, we were willing to prevent any leakage from that wreck later. Because the Estonia sank in open water to a depth of 80 meters, it was clear that the oil removal operation would be difficult. There were two methods for oil removal from the wreck at this depth. The first method was to utilize saturation divers. The divers would perform all the required underwater tasks. The second method was to use remotely operated robots in which the underwater tasks would be performed using robot technology and operated and observed from a support vessel above the wreck. Well, we compared those both outputs very carefully, of course. Uh, there were some benefits uh, on, on the either, in other and some on the other. Uh, finally, it was quite clear that we will try to make this uh, job with uh, robots and uh, by uh, our own lady. It was decided that the wreck would be emptied in a surface operation using remotely operated vehicles, ROVs, to perform the difficult underwater tasks such as measuring, marking, drilling, and the installation and removal of pumping equipment. Finnish Environment Institute had previously got some experience from similar works. 1994 and 1995 we have removed oil from the wreck of Park Victoria. In, in that work, we have used uh, some uh, Finnish uh, firms, uh, Typhoon Engineering Company, and uh, together we have achieved some new results. It seems, uh, and it seemed, quite reasonable to try to uh, apply those uh, experiences for a new project in Estonia case and combine it by using the robots. And besides the typhoon, so far we needed uh, such kind of experience from somewhere and uh, it revealed that in Norway there was a company, Frank Moon, and, uh, and companies that are operating underwater um, robots uh, in offshore industry. And uh, we make some kind of compilation, uh, those kind of equipments and, and firms, and uh, um, requested their offers to do that uh, work as a subcontractors to us. The project got underway at the end of January 1996 and the suppliers began the considerable task of planning the various operational stages and solving the problems of interconnection between different equipment. The Finnish Environmental Institute appointed the pollution control vessel Halli as the operational support vessel and the pollution control vessel Hylje for standby to assist and clean up any spills during the operation. 
the strict schedule for the covering operation allowed no time for full-length tests of equipment. However, because of close cooperation between operators, a technical entity was created which enabled the carrying out of the operation. Prior to the operation in the field, extensive testing and drills were undertaken to ensure seamless compatibility. The pollution control vessel Halli was fitted out in Turku with the required equipment for the operation. An operational center was established on the vessel where all pumping related activities were carried out. The operational center supervised and operated the ROLs, ROV, and the Coast Guard ROV activity with the aid of video imagery. The actual pumping equipment was fitted to the deck of the Halli. Once the equipment was on board, the Halli departed for the Estonia site. It was predicted that weather conditions could cause significant changes in the timetable. Nevertheless, a strict schedule was established and strictly enforced, with consideration given, of course, to safety factors. Another factor taken into consideration was the covering operation of the wreck. A vessel was in the process of installing reinforcement around the wreck. We lost about half of the working time in different difficulties at area of techniques and because of weather. However, we could do our job in general at sea. The wreck was located from established coordinates. The Halli arrived at the site on April 11, 1996. This animation shows the location and position of the wreck on the seafloor. The Estonia lies on its side at a depth of about 80 meters. The wreck contained about 410 tons of oil, of which about 302 tons were heavy fuel oil. They were situated in tanks 10, 11, 36, 37, 38, and 39. About 52 tons of diesel and fuel oil were located in tanks 18, 20, and 41. About 56 tons of lubricating oil were located in tanks 25, 26, 27, 28, 30, and 32. The removal of 200 tons of oil from the wreck was set as the objective. The pollution control vessel Halli's dynamic positioning system was able to maintain the vessel's position above the pumping area to an accuracy of 5 meters with wind factors under 14 meters per second. So mooring of the vessel was not required. During the operation, the crew of the Halli maintained radio traffic and maneuvering. They were also responsible for maritime safety. Working in an isolated environment requires flexibility and a tolerance for stress from its crew members. Throughout the operation, everyone had a position and a responsibility. I was working as operational manager at sea and my task was to get the under contractors work connected so that they could do their own task and, and work together. The deck operations were supervised by Ossi Keranen from the Finnish Environmental Institute. A Swedish observer, Gustav Hanuliak, represented the Swedish authorities as Sweden was financing half of the operation. The only connections to the mainland were supply vessels which brought supplies and provisions, as well as a helicopter which brought news and any urgent supplies. The locating of the tanks on the wreck was carried out according to the ship's drawings. 
One very important factor was to avoid structures behind the shell plating and to find a location as close to the upper corner of the tank as possible. Here the pumping equipment was to be placed, with the laws of physics maximizing the amount of oil removed from the tank. Cranes aboard the pollution control vessel Holly were used to lower the pumping equipment. The maneuvering of the equipment at depths over 60 meters with an accuracy of centimeters was a truly demanding task. Once the tank's penetration position was verified, an ROV was launched. The ROV marked the position to be penetrated with a magnet, which was the target for the ROLS to penetrate the hull. The target magnet was placed in a correct position, established from working drawings of the vessel and shell plate weld seams, and by using fixed lengths of wire to outline the tank's shape. It was decided that the tanks with diesel and fuel oils which were directly against the hull shell plating would be emptied by the Norwegian company Frank Mon. They have previous experience of similar operations. Once the penetration point was established, the ROLS was lowered. The first stage was to install a base plate to the hull. The entire pumping operation would be carried out through it. The base plate was installed on the ROLS. The ROLS with the discharge line fitted was maneuvered into the area of penetration with the crane. After this, the ROLS was able to move using its own thrusters to the target area marked with the magnet. The ROLS was assisted by an ROV connected to the ROLS with electromagnets. Once the penetration target was located, the ROLS used its thrusters and secured itself against the hull. The base plate was secured to the hull with self-drilling bolts. The average time for one bolt was about four minutes. As the self-drilling bolts penetrated the hull, a discharge of gas from the tank through the holes continued until the base plate was sealed against the hull. Once the required bolts were secure, the actual penetration for the pumping hole could begin. This was done using a drilling tool installed in the ROLS. The penetration hole was six inches in diameter. Once the hull was penetrated, pumping could begin immediately. The drill was driven deeper into the tank and the ROLS began to pump. Everything was ready for the discharge of oil from the wreck through the cargo line to the support vessel tanks. The entire operation was observed and controlled from the surface through video monitors and from deck observations. This is the procedure for the discharge of diesel and fuel oils. Once the diesel or fuel oil is removed from the double bottom tank, the ROLS is refitted with a new base plate and launched for the next point of penetration. The entire pumping operation is observed from cameras mounted on the ROVs and ROLS. The ROVs assist continually with maneuvering and connecting tasks. Control from the surface for signs of spillage and a possible need for cleanup is carried out by the pollution control vessel Hülje. Continual patrol flights by Coast Guard planes as well as satellite monitoring are used to detect spillage. Diesel, fuel oils and lubricating oils were removed on Wednesday, May 1, 1996 and the first phase came to an end. Friday, May 31, 1996, was the beginning of the second phase, which was to remove the heavy fuel oil from the Estonia. Because the heavy fuel oil was in tanks situated behind the tank top, a different approach and know-how were required. This was carried out using Typhoon Engineering's technology. Typhoon had previous experience in removing oil from other wrecks and accidents. For the emptying of the heavy fuel oil double bottom tanks, an ROLS base plate was installed with a method similar to that used for emptying diesel and fuel oils. The ROLS penetrates the hull and closes the base plate valve. A cargo line and integrated heating on a pedestal 
are secured to the base plate with assistance from the ROVs. With ambient temperatures of 4 degrees Celsius, heavy fuel oil requires heating so that it becomes fluid before being discharged from the wreck. This technique is a result of years of research and development at Typhoon Engineering. Once the oil is warm enough, vacuum transfer may begin. Initially, only gases are discharged. Once the gases have escaped, the oil begins to flow into the support vessel's tanks. The removed oil is replaced with water. As oil is lighter than water, it rises on the water to the discharge hole and out via vacuum transfer. As soon as the oil is removed from the tanks, water is discharged and the pumping can be stopped. Samples of the discharged oil are taken to determine its composition. Once discharging is stopped, ROVs move the pumping equipment to the next penetrated tank to be emptied. The most challenging oil to be removed was the heavy fuel oil from tanks situated inside the vessel on top of the tank top. This was done with a separate 120 centimeter long double bottom tool which was drawn through an emptied tank to a tank top further in. First, the double bottom tool is secured to a base plate. The ROV then connects to the double bottom tool and begins to drill a three inch hole into the tank to be discharged. Once it is penetrated, a heating pipe is placed through the hole and begins to heat the heavy fuel. The heated oil is then discharged from the tank with vacuum transfer as were earlier heavy fuel oil tanks. The Estonia has 15 oil tanks, two of which were situated in the interior of the vessel. Once the planned pumping was completed, the base plates were removed and the holes were sealed with plugs and all the subsea equipment and tools were returned to the pollution control vessel Halli. Throughout the entire oil removal operation, the pollution control vessel Hülle removed only 8 cubic meters or under 4% of the oil in the wreck of the Estonia. I think uh, we overcome the job. Really, it was difficult. There was difficulties when uh, taking together uh, so two so different kind of work in same time. Those timetables were not entirely uh, and completely together and uh, there was additional waiting times and um, some kind of some kind of uh, different uh, smaller uh, difficulties but in any case we were able to achieve uh, those uh, main goals to remove the oil that was removable in the wreck, uh, the amount of it was uh, 230 cubics when we thought in the beginning that uh, the tolerant, uh, we will tolerate uh, over, over 200 uh, cubics amounts. And as a final, it was also a good exercise. <laughs>